So cycle three, week three, hands on science, we are doing an experiment called fingerprints. So today we're going to be looking at our fingerprints. We're going to be making prints of our own fingers and talking about what we find. So what are fingerprints? Like, why do we have fingerprints? What do we already know about, about fingertips? any stories about things that have happened to your fingertips? Which of our five senses use our fingertips? Touch. You're right. It's touch. What might we want to learn about, what more might we want to learn if we're learning about fingertips? Maybe about the skin that's on our fingertips and the different layers. Did you know that skin is actually an organ? So maybe we could learn more about that. What do you think when we, when we make prints of our own fingertips, what do you think we'll see? What do you think it will look like? Do you think every one of our fingers will look the same? Do you think they'll look really different or a little different or exactly the same? Do you think all of us have the same fingerprints or are they different? Do you think people in the same family have similar fingerprints? All good questions. So to get us started, we need some materials. So we're going to use a pencil to create something to make our fingerprints with, tape, um, and a magnifying glass to start with. So. I'm just going to hold my pencil sideways and make some, I'm pushing down, trying to make some dust so that we can really get our fingerprints made. Okay. So I'm going to press, I'm going to rub my finger, get it nice and pencil-y. And then I'm going to press it on the sticky side of a piece of tape. See how it made a nice little fingerprint? And then I'm going to stick it on a paper. Cool! And I'm going to keep doing that until I've got all the fingers on one hand done. And if you need to create more pencil dust as you're working, that's totally fine. I got a little piece of dust stuck up in that one, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm not going to do all of my fingers. You can, though. I'm going to stop after this one. But you should do all five and make sure you keep them lined up just so you know which fingers they are because it's fun. It's fun to know what you're looking at. So now that you have them all out, we can use a magnifying glass and take a look at them even bigger. And remember with a magnifying glass, you don't want it right up at your eyes because really then everything's just blurry. And you don't want it flat down where you're looking because then it's not magnifying. You want to lift it up a bit above where you're looking until what you're looking at is larger. It's almost like midway between my eyeballs and the paper. Wow, mine's kind of swirly. If you have one of these at home, you could look through here. My little, this is like a little pocket um, microscope, so I can place it down here and, and look really close. Maybe we'll have some of these on community day. I don't know. So that's another option, but at least for sure the magnifying glasses we'll have. So I can see on mine, and I bet you can see on yours, that all my fingerprints are different. Each one is unique. Each and every fingerprint on each and every person is different. Each finger on your hand has a different and not one person on the planet 
has the same fingerprints, not even twins. Wonder why that is? Because we're not born with our fingerprints. Each tiny ridge and pattern starts developing about three months before you're born. Scientists think that the middle layer of your skin grows faster than the layers surrounding it, and so it gets squished inside. It bends and buckles and folds into the ridge patterns that we see on our fingertips. Even the movements you make before you're born push, pull, and shape your fingerprints into the permanent patterns you see now. There are actually three types of fingerprint patterns, and I have, I have them to show you right here. There's the arch, the loop, and the whirl. These can be looked to you, these can be used to help identify people <coughs> because each person's prints are unique. Your skin is actually the largest organ in your body. The outer layer is called the epidermis, and here's the layers of the skin down here. The outer layer that you can see is called the epidermis, and it's mainly made of dead skin cells. The next layer is the dermis, and it's filled with the sensory nerves that help you feel. It also has tiny holes that pores, that called pores for hair follicles, as well as oil glands, blood vessels, and sweat glands. The inner layer is a fatty layer that helps insulate and cushion your body. So, is skin a tissue or an organ? Ooh, trick question. It's both. Tissues are a collection of similar cells, which skin is, but organs are a collection of tissues that work together to perform a particular function, which skin also is. So just like week one, skin is connective tissue. So we learn the types of tissue in week one, and skin is a is connective tissue, and the outer layer of skin is epithelial tissue. So how fun, how interesting, learning all about fingerprints.